Mm, okay, well, hi, everybody. Welcome back. And welcome to our second session for our online retreat. And uh, we're in for a treat tonight. So we have Eric Archbold with us here at Casa Quantico in Mexico, ready to uh, play some music for us. So I'll pass it right over to you, Eric. Okay. Hi, everybody. Ah, welcome. <clears throat> Welcome to the second session of our Dependence on God retreat. Yeah, I feel uh, very grateful to have this opportunity to sing some songs and to share with you just how deep uh, this journey feels to me, especially lately, I feel like there's been this deepening that's been occurring for me and I think for many of us in our community towards um, just a, a deeper trust in the spirit. And, and what I would say, um, going, going closer into mysticism, closer into that, that real profound uh, dependence on, on spirit, on, on God for absolutely every moment um, you know, really, really dropping the, um, the dependence that we've had on the ego, uh, you know, dropping any dependence on, on my past learning, on what I, what I think I understand about the world. And um, yeah, we, we titled the retreat Dependence on God, uh, I think over a month ago when we realized that this weekend falls on uh, what they call Independence Day in the United States. And um, I, I heard it also it's, it's right around uh, the Independence Day for Canada. And at the time, I remembered that there is actually a couple parts in A Course in Miracles where Jesus uh, uses that idea, but, but he turns it around and he says that today is, is your declaration of independence. Uh, from the ego, and and so when we <laughs> when we drop any any tie to the ego, when we drop our dependence on it, then there's only one other choice, and that's to to really listen inwardly and to depend fully on on the Holy Spirit, on Jesus, and on God to to remind us that that we're innocent and that. We don't actually have to figure anything out about our journey and how it's going to go. Even uh, with this session, I was just in prayer for the last couple of days uh, since it became clear that I would be offering a concert this evening. I I started asking Spirit, "Is there any, <laughs> is there any, uh, you know, song list? Can you give me a song list?" Can you give me uh, a script? Is there anything you want me to definitely say or play tonight? And yet, I kept I kept hearing nothing, <laughs> and and I and and yet I I was getting the the feeling that God was saying to me, "No, you actually, this session is going to be for you to practice <laughs> depending on God for." for which song to play moment by moment or not to play um, that it, it doesn't even really have to be thought of as a, a concert per se um, but that it's simply an opportunity to rest in the truth and and you know music will come but it's it's not really about the music it's really about the the presence that that is available <clears throat> so yeah i just feel grateful to be here with all of you and for me music has always been such a beautiful uh, uh symbol um of of like kind of like the angels singing to to us and reminding us of our innocence and i remember years ago when i i made kind of a the transition in my life from from having a career and Kind of depending on that career for my my sustenance into um, 
just giving my life over to God and saying, okay, I, I really just want to give. I don't want to be living my life uh, for the purpose of survival anymore. I, I just want to I just want to live a simple life. I want to play music. I want to sing. I want to speak these ideas. And I don't know how I'm going to get paid for that, but, but it, I don't care anymore. I, I just want to live um, in that rhythm, in that spirit. I want to live from my heart. And, and then, you know, miraculously, you know, my debts got paid off in ways that I couldn't have expected. And, and I started to hear songs coming to me that um, that reminded me of this, you know, that this is this is worthy, that this is reliable, that giving giving my life over to God is is a good decision, and that I'll be I'll be well taken care of uh, in ways I I just I can't predict uh, because I won't be depending on my my intellect or my past learning anymore. So I feel to share uh, some of those songs with you tonight. And I'm also going to share some other songs that I've, I've learned um, that other people have, have written, um, you know, which all of them feel like they were written by the spirit. And um, I think that Andy and Diana behind the scenes might be putting some of the lyrics to uh, some of the songs into the chat in case anyone wants to to sing along or or just read along but yeah I invite you to to really sink in and and use this for you know for getting in touch with your heart and and feeling the music and and feeling the the love that um, is behind behind everything. So I feel to start with a song that came to me pretty early on in that journey, which is called Rhythm of the Soul. Sometimes I get so afraid Of this made up world I made But when I trust inside There's no need to hide my heart I have suffered far too long Thinking I could know for myself what's right and what's wrong But now I'm learning to laugh At all those games I played in the past Now I'm living by the rhythm of the soul And it's calling me home I'm giving up believing that I really know anything at all I'm forgiving myself for being afraid and running away I'm living by the rhythm of the soul and I trust I will be shown Which way to go, which way to flow Which way to know who I am And who I've always been well, There's a secret in your heart That can tell you who you are And if I forgive you Then 
And I may know that secret Cause now I'm living by the rhythm of the soul And it's calling me home I'm giving up believing that I really know anything at all I'm forgiving myself for being afraid and running Living by the rhythm of the soul And I trust I will be shown Which way to go Which way to flow Which way to know Who I am And who I've always been well, It can be so easy I stop making it so hard When I just trust the river It gently carries me along To the sound of my favorite song If you sometimes feel afraid Of this made up world we made You can trust inside And you'll know everything's okay Cause now we're living by the rhythm of the soul and it's calling us home we're giving up believing that we've ever known anything at all we're forgiving ourselves for being afraid and running away we're living by the rhythm of the soul Yeah, it's so amazing. I, I think that every year that I practice the course, I feel like I, I look back on who I was the year before and I realize, wow, like I'm, I'm not the same person as I was. Um, you know, the, the spirit is definitely, <laughs> it's definitely working on me. I think it's kind of like, like growing like physically growing up, uh, you don't really see that you're growing until some time has passed. And then you, you kind of look back on who you were and you see that you have made progress, but, but it can seem so minute. And also I was talking to a friend the other day about how painful it can sometimes seem when we're going through the darkness you know, when, when we're facing, I, I, I was talking to uh, someone today on a, I was doing a counseling call and we were talking about the idea in the course that where Jesus says, until you're willing to face the full extent of your own uh, self-hatred, <clears throat> that you, you won't be willing to let it go. And, and yet, I think that is, is quite, it's, it's easier said than done. 
because we're just we're just so terrified on a very deep level of 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 the love actually that's underneath the self hatred, and yet, yeah, we just have to trust that it's all going to work out. You know, I, I I'm so grateful for Jesus that He's written this this big book for us to give us a really, really clear context about what is going on. Because, um, yeah, prior to the course, I mean, I, I just felt like I, I need to, <laughs> I really, really, I need to understand, you know, where is this pain coming from? What, what is going on? Uh, what is the purpose of, of this world? And so, yeah, it's, it just comes to us, uh, you know, as our willingness continues to open and, and uh, remind us of everything that we have pushed, pushed out of awareness. And the music has really helped me over the years. I remember when I first started kind of trusting in a much deeper way, um, the, the first song I was given uh, was called Just Relax. And it, it, was very, um, it was very necessary for me to hear that, to hear this song um, over and over and over again. Because uh, I, I, I remember I kind of went on the road. I was guided actually to, to get married very quickly after, after leaving my career behind at the time. And then I was just really in the, like in a clueless state of how this was all going to work out. And yet um, my, um, my wife at the time, she and I were, were singing these songs wherever we would go and just really hearing them for ourselves. I, I had to hear it again and again and again, because the fear of the ego, the ego's fear would come up so strongly and try to try to tell me that I wasn't worthy of this, you know, try to tell me that I, I should give up that there's no way I'm going to be able to transcend the ego. And yet, um, yeah, these words, these words kept coming to me and reminding me that no, it's all good. <laughs> you, you're safe and, and you can just relax. Just relax Go slow There's no need to worry there are no monsters chasing you Just be still And let go There's no need to worry And there's nothing that you really need to do Nothing about yourself you need to hide. Take off the mask and let the light shine on your innocent face. You've never done anything wrong. There's nothing Protect yourself from Your nightmares are over You don't need to run Just open your eyes And see there's nothing to fear All of your nightmares 
years have long disappeared Seems a long time ago You dreamed you'd left home And wandered outside in the cold Substitutes, but they could not erase the pain of forgetting the truth. Well, it's still in your heart, and it's still in your soul. Just take off your heavy armor and let. Just relax, go slow, there's no need to hurry, for there are no monsters chasing you, right here, and right now, you can be at peace. Only love is all around. It's called the silent song. It's 
hard to hear if you're listening only with your hoary ears. Can you see the light shining endlessly through your mind? It's hard to find you're looking only with your eyes. Can you smile, smile, lightens up the world for a while. But don't try, it will come naturally when you're inspired. By the love inside Can you see We're imprisoned only by our belief Take my hand We'll rise together from this foreign land And see that we never need to think nor plan We must only decide We'll be happy once we made up Walking faster only slows you down Just be patient, keep your feet on the ground Can you feel the love? It's all around to help you rise Let go and simply fall in love Nothing to fear. I remember when I first read that that lesson in A Course in Miracles, I I just felt every every cell of my body relax.
And another one of my favorite lessons is in my defenselessness, my safety lies. And I, I think that every, every time that fear arises, um, you know, even today I was, I was noticing, like I mentioned earlier, some fear uh, about this session, about this concert and kind of like asking God, is there something, you know, can you give me a script or could you give me a song list? And can you tell me what the plan is here? Uh, you know, so I can at least be prepared <laughs> in some way. And, um, and that lesson about defenselessness started to pop into my mind because I realized that underneath the, the desire to have a plan was and is this, um, this desire to hold on to basically to defend a self-concept, um, you know, to, to uh, maintain some kind of stature or uh, appearance. And that when I can, you know, let go of, of, of defending that, that self, when I can just drop into, yeah, the, it's, it's worthless. It's actually completely worthless. This, uh, this idea of, of who I am, uh, then, yeah, the fear doesn't, uh, doesn't, doesn't have a hold because there's nothing to defend. And that's the only reason that fear ever is present is, is that we actually, you know, deep down, we're afraid of, of losing the thing that we think is so valuable, this, this self and the world that, that we've surrounded <laughs> the self with. None of it has any value. And, uh, and yet we can only learn that through, I think, a very gentle, loving curriculum of miracles that just help us to little by little uh, see that it's, it's that God is more valuable, <laughs> that, uh, that resting in presence, that, that focusing on, on purpose is, is the only thing that really matters. And that if I, if I can relax in that, if I can stay in the purpose, then, yeah, not, everything else will just kind of work itself out. All the details, all the practicalities, all the, the, the behaviors of the body will just, you know, uh, come from, from that deeper purpose of peace and healing. I remember one time I was in a, a satsang uh, in California. Some of you may not know, but a satsang is, a, is like an Indian word, a Sanskrit term that means um, joining in the presence of God, basically. And I was with this guru in California named Avasa. And... Uh, it was very beautiful. It was very present, and and I remember at the end of the of the gathering, he he gave like a a, a two hour talk, and then at the end he he went around the room to each person. And he sat in front of each person for like a few minutes at a time, just gazing into their eye, just sitting with them, and just being very present with them. And I remember, you know, I was about halfway down, and he was just going one by one, and. I remember feeling <laughs> a little bit scared 
of when he'd get to me. And he, I think he was saying things to people occasionally too, but I could hear little things he would say to people here and there. And I, I thought, <laughs> what is he going to say to me? And, and part of me wanted to leave. And then another part of me just felt like, no, I've got to stay. This is, this might change my life <laughs> forever. And finally he got to me and he sat in front of me. I'll never forget for like, I don't know, it felt like a long time. It was probably just maybe three minutes, but it felt felt like a lot, a lot longer, longer. And then and finally he he just very, very gently he said to me, let life unfold. And I just felt again, it was like every cell in my body just that's it that's the secret to life you know no control just let life unfold and then uh, years later i was guided to write a song based on that that wisdom that was given to me Sometimes it's like the sun is shining And I can't feel it all day And other times it seems no matter how I try Nothing's gonna go my way And I don't know why things go the way they go anyway but that's okay something tells me life can offer only love endless and free and if I'm afraid ashamed and suffering it's only cause I'm thinking about me I look in the mirror And I know it's self-deception To believe That I am the image I see Cause I feel The river inside Keep on trying to hold on to the branches on the side. But when I let go, deep down I know that everything will be all right if I just go with the flow and let life unfold. A simple piece of wisdom that I was once told It means giving up the illusion that I am in control Well, I can let go And you can let go And let a life unfold You can take me anywhere I got nothing to lose And even if it seems my life is on the line I'll know it's only just a ruse I won't be fooled anymore Because there's nothing that I want more than to feel the river inside I keep on trying to hold on to the branches on the side But when I let go, deep down I know 
But everything will be all right if I just go with the flow and let life unfold. A simple piece of wisdom I was once told means giving up the illusion that I am in control. Well, I can let go. You can let go and let life unfold. We're floating on a river going home. There's no need, no need, no need to control. Well, I can let go. We can let go and let life unfold. This one is called, I Give My Life Over to You. This one was written by my, uh, my ex-wife, my wife at the time, Armel. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a very simple, sweet song that I always, I always found very, very sweet. my life over to you. I give my life over to you. Cause I don't know what anything is for. I don't, I don't know. And I don't know what's best for me. I don't, I don't I 
I got in a more upbeat mode through that one, so I think I'll continue in that uh, direction. This one's called Already Home. without a guide I lost my way in the woods of confusion in space and time I lost myself inside my mind in my mind in my mind but fortunately just in my mind Love is the only answer to all the questions I have tried answering all by myself which only made me tired so Tried to do it all myself, and now I'm tired. Cause it's not so easy to lie to myself anymore. Something's calling me back to who I was before. I cannot keep running away. All I've got to do now is stop and remember I'm already home, never alone. And though I've traveled in dreams, I've never left my been addicted to a story, the story of my life, I gave up everything I had, just to be right, to be right, but now I know I'd rather be wrong.
Though I've traveled in dreams I've never left my home Never left home Though I've traveled in dreams I've never left my home Okay. Well, after that, I'm now I'm going to tone it back down. <laughs> and uh, I'm hearing a song that a, a, a friend of mine wrote. Uh, her name is Laura Chopin. It's called Sweet Amazing Grace. And uh, yeah, this is this is one to just really drop deep into your heart with. that I could fail you You show me I can fly Hide and seek but do not find I've played for far too long I was lost now I'm found your sweet amazing grace pours through this song. And when I take down the walls, your light comes streaming in where I thought you would read me you pour me holy wine instead how could I try to hide from you it's a mystery to me for now I know your smiles my own Invite me in 
When I take your outstretched hand, I know not where I end and you begin. Sweet, amazing grace. Sweet. I don't think I'm going to sing this song, but <laughs> I just started hearing that um, that line from the Beatles song. And there's nothing to get hung about. Strawberry fields forever. My friend Laura, the one who wrote that song, she also wrote um, she wrote a song that was based on Strawberry Fields Forever. This was about, I don't know, probably seven years ago. We were at uh, a festival. We used, to, we used to have a music and enlightenment festival every year at the Living Miracles Monastery there in Utah, which is uh, right now, there's a, a, some people there and they're building a deck. Uh, Kirsten is there. She was talking about the the deck project earlier on her on the morning session, on the opening session. But um, yeah, we used to have this really beautiful uh, music festival where we would invite musicians from all over the world who were who were into the chorus to come and and sing and. And uh, we, David would give enlightenment talks and we would watch movies and listen to music. And it was amazing. I, I, uh, I'm sure it'll come back someday, <laughs> but now we're doing uh, so many things online and, and we have our mystery school coming up in Mexico. But um, this song that she wrote was um, one that I felt kind of captured the, the that the feeling of we're all in this together, like we're all, we, we can't really go home without each other. This isn't a, a solo journey. And, uh, and so that's why I think these online retreats are so helpful and why we're always in prayer about, you know, ways of inviting people into this, into this community, you know, not like, necessarily physically but into the purpose into the mind into this feeling of of we're all in this together some of you may have heard that we have a new online community called tribe and it's just a really beautiful it's kind of like our own our own social media network but it's it's like a private network where where people can just really feel safe to share whatever is is coming up for them and we have different groups inside of it. And yeah, I feel like I feel like the heart of it is that is that we are all moving deeper and deeper into, into God and to love, into joy, into peace. And uh, and these songs can help remind us and these these different uh, internet symbols like online communities. So I think I'll share this this song with you that uh, that Laura wrote. She she told me that before she wrote it, she 
she checked in with uh, with John Lennon and George Harrison in her mind and said, is this OK? Because because it's kind of almost like plagiarism of of Strawberry Fields forever. But she made she called it Strawberry Fields Redux. And it's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's got I've got the lyrics here because I haven't played it in a long time. So I'll uh, I'll play it for you here. We're all going home, my friends, walking each other down the path to where the suffering ends. And only true love reigns. So take my hand and meet my smile. Let me find myself within your endless eyes. For every step we take together, we'll buy a mile. Let me take you down to strawberry fields where nothing is real. But the hand we hold to get there, we come as we are. And there's nothing to get hung about in strawberry fields mm -hmm. so if the road has made you weary and you want to fall apart well that's okay let the pieces fly away Grab the hand that's next to you Look into your brother's eyes And see the best of you Nothing can stop us now You can take me down to strawberry fields Where nothing is real But the hand There's nothing to get hung about in strawberry fields. These canyon walls have seen it all, for they gave way to the and now they cheer us on So let the flow of life run through us and undo us It's our we are and there's nothing to get hung about strawberry fields mm. strawberry fields
I was thinking earlier about when I first met David Hoffmeister. And um, I think I had seen him online, but I think the first time I was actually, like I got to interact with him was at a gathering in uh, Sacramento, California. And I came there, uh, brought my guitar. I, I still had my career at the time. It was, I just kind of gotten into the course maybe a few years earlier, but uh, I really wasn't aware of, of how deep this rabbit hole goes. <laughs> I had studied, uh, you know, Ken Wapnick and I'd read Gary Renard's books and I, I thought I had a really good grasp on the course and I felt like I understood it. But then, I don't know, meeting David, I, it was like, I could, it was like my, my mind started to short circuit a bit. And I, I, I started to realize I, I wasn't going to be able to hold on to even my intellectual knowledge of A Course in Miracles. Remember one time, <laughs> one time David said to me, yeah, the the term intellectual understanding is, it's actually an oxymoron. Because <laughs> I would say that a lot, like, I, yeah, I understand that intellectually, but da -na 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 -na. And, and, you know, he would say, yeah, anytime you say you understand something intellectually, but it means you don't actually understand it at all. And, and that, you know, it took me a, Took me a while to really surrender to that, to kind of go, okay, maybe he's right. Maybe, maybe there's some deeper, you know, like the Course says that understanding only comes with peace. Peace and understanding go together and they cannot be found apart. So it was the beginning of my undoing of the, uh, the intellect and the, the the intellectual pride that I that I held on to for a long time. <clears throat> but I, I remember at that first gathering, he was so encouraging of me to play my music. You know, he I at the at the time for me, music was just like a kind of like a campfire hobby. I, I didn't I didn't think of it as like a big deal. I didn't think of it as something that I might actually start to really pour my heart into for the, for the rest of my life, you know, or that I would be used by spirit um, with music. It was just like kind of, kind of a side thing. And so he said, yeah, please, why don't you bring your guitar and, and play, play one of your songs at the, at my gathering. So I did, I brought, I brought my guitar and I played this song called peace of mind that I'll play for you, uh, which was, kind of like the first spiritual song I ever wrote uh, back in college uh, when I was just starting to kind of get a glimpse. I, I, I had had a kind of a mystical experience and yeah, opening up to the possibility that this world is, is not at all what it seems and, and that I, I just really, I, I can't understand my, I can't, I can't uh, rely on my perception. <laughs> and, and then I always love that line in the course that there's nothing so blinding as perception of form. It's a very humbling line. So this was, this was the song I played initially for David that I wrote back in, I forget the year, probably around the year 2000, no, 1996 or something like that. It's called Peace of Mind. Will you take me for a ride? I'd like to see the other side before I go. Just some things I really want to know Will you tell me what they mean All the strange 
things that I've seen before I die. For oh so very long I've wondered why all the things that make me think and why I always seem to sink when I try. I only want to find some peace of mind. Little peace of mine. I'm a seeker on a quest, chasing what I know is best for my soul. Trying to do the things that'll guide me home. They say they're all inside you, but would you please show me where the lights that look like heaven may blind you in the eye. And all your deepest questions that you ask begin with why, why, why? So I've packed a couple things and I'm going for a ride. I'd like to take some time just to look down deep inside. I don't know where I'm going, oh no, just where I've been. Led by dreams and inspiration, I am leaving all my friends for a while. Left all my possessions for a while Think about the things that make me smile Do you remember what it was to be a child? If we could only find all the things we've left behind On the road that leads us to our As the years are getting older, my wings are getting colder, but I'm finding, I find it's getting easier to fly, and if I fly home every day, I will never lose my way, but still blind you in the eye but all your deepest questions that you ask will lead to peace of
I just want to say thank you all so much for being here, for joining me in this presence, for joining me in this, this purpose. So grateful for the way that that life is unfolding. And I feel like I I just don't need to to know the future anymore. I was talking to a, a woman today on this counseling call who who is um, contemplating the possibility of of like leaving her whole life behind and um, coming to the mystery school that we're going to be having in September, uh, you know, moving to Mexico or at least just coming, you know, for the school and, and maybe going back to wrap things up. But, but she was very, very frightened and, and just really struggling with this decision. Like, should I go to Mexico or should I not? Should I go to Mexico or should I just, you know, stay here and keep working? <laughs> and she has another job opportunity right now. So she's, she's really feeling conflicted. And all I could think to tell her was, well, it's, it's really not a decision between coming to Mexico or, or not coming to Mexico. It's, you know, it's, it's so, yeah, it's so difficult when we think that we have to actually make decisions like that about our life as if we're responsible for our life and um jesus is just telling us no you're you're really not you, <laughs> you you're not the you're not the chooser you're not the one who's who's making the decisions about what the body does i know you think <laughs> that you have control and that you think that you that you're the one making those kinds of decisions, but you're really not. You're you're the only decisions you're ever making is whether to relax and just forgive and see through the illusion of the ego, or to or to hide from reality and and uh, you know get all caught up and 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 preoccupied with time and space and. Yeah, it just really simplifies things. I was, we were, she asked me, what about the script is written? And I just said, yeah, it's, it does simplify things. You know, if you, if you realize that you, that it really is all pre-scripted, you don't actually have any control over what's going to seem to unfold in the dream. You don't have any control over that. None, like zilch. You only can choose how to look on it. You, you can look on it with the spirit. And you can be happy and you can relax and just let life unfold unfold. <laughs> and that's that's the secret to a, an easy life. And then you'll just be told, you know, it'll be, you know, it'll he says at one point, it'll be as if you're being carried down a quiet path in summer, because because you won't be having to decide those things. You, you know, anytime. You feel tempted, like you have to make a decision in form. You can just stop and and just listen and just wait. And if you're if you if you even have to make a form decision between this or that, you'll be told. You'll be told in the moment that you need to know, and not one minute earlier. Sometimes Jesus doesn't tell us the guidance. You know that what the decision will be in form until until like you know, the 11th hour when we're, we're like kind of freaking out thinking I, I have to make a decision. And then, you know, he, he, he tells us what we, what we need to hear, what we, what will relax us. But uh, yeah, it really is such a gift. I, I love listening to David because he just, he's always reiterating that, that it's, it, it can be so easy doesn't have to be a struggle you know you're not in charge of your of your life or your seeming life at all i was just thinking of another song
that uh, hmm. yeah, that was it. Yeah, this one is also one that was written by Armel, um, the one I was married to several years ago. And it's called No Need for More. And I remember when she wrote this song or when, I, when she, yeah, when she heard it or channeled it, whatever, <laughs> however it came through her, uh, she was really struggling with <clears throat> that same idea of, of should I join the community or not? Like, uh, you know, like I, am I in or out? Like, should I, is it okay to just stay where I am in my life or, or do I have to join a community? Do I have to belong to a group of people to be happy? Do I have to belong to this group and inform? And then she got so happy one day and she told me she had written this song and, and it was all about all about um, how you, you know, you don't, you don't need to, you don't need to belong to anything in the world that, uh, you know, like David is always saying there, there really is no community in form. <laughs> you know, it, it definitely can seem like there is, like we have a house here and there's several of us that live here and we have other properties where we have people volunteering and you could call that a community, but but really, it's it's just it's just a state of mind. Uh, the community is a is a concept. Community is just a concept. And um, so this song she wrote was all about how she's been looking for a home in the world, like looking for a place to belong, and how that that's that's the source of struggle when we think we have to find our place in the world then it's a very, uh, it's a very sad journey. And that's, that's actually what she wrote in here. The, the lyrics say, I've been looking for a home, a place out in the world where I belong. It's been a sad song. It's been a sad song. <laughs> but now I'm seeing the impossibility of rejection. There's no need for chasing after inclusion. It's just an illusion. And then the chorus says, no need for belonging anymore. I know who I belong to in the core. No need for more. No need for more. No need for more. So enjoy. I've been looking for a home A place out in the world where I'd belong It's been a sad song It's been a sad song But now I'm seeing the impossibility of rejection There's no need for chasing after inclusion. It's just an illusion. Just an illusion. No need for belonging anymore. I know who I belong to in the core. No need for more, no need for more, no need for more. Released in the inner freedom. No need to go anywhere, no need to run. 
There are no blocks nor walls, so I've no need for open doors. I am free once and for all. No need for belonging anymore I know who I belong to in the core No need for more No need for more No need for more All that you give is all that I want. Perfect peace and joy for no reason. Perfect love and grace is my wisdom. It's all that I want. All that I want, all that I want, it's all that I want, all that I want. I love that line in the Bible, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all else will be given to you. Because <clears throat> it does seem like, uh, like the more I've <laughs> like let go of chasing after the things of the world, it seems like they, they just keep being given in, in such abundance. all the travels and and the people i mean just the amazing people that that come into awareness to support us to to reflect our own desire for for god and all it requires is that we're willing to to keep facing the darkness. You know, because as long as it's not looked at, it, it just seems to be the, uh, the source of, of our, our state of mind. It has, to, it has to be looked at, but not like we can personally do that. We, we, have, to, we have to ask for help. We have to really, we have to accept that we're helpless without, without the spirit, without Jesus's help. We really are completely dependent, like little babies. We are completely dependent on the spirit for our healing. <clears throat> we really, we cannot wake ourselves up. That's another line I really like in the chorus. He says, you cannot wake yourself but you can um, allow yourself to be awakened
yeah, I had an experience. I was talking to um, talking to this man two days ago, who um, is also interested in coming to the mystery school, <clears throat> and um, I was guided to tell him this story of when I first came to a devotional retreat with this community, and my ego just reared up so strongly. It just felt so threatened that it went into this defense mode, which was very, very sneaky. I, I didn't, I couldn't see it at the time until after. But the defense was, the ego was basically saying, okay, all these people here, they're devoted to enlightenment and awakening. Great. I, I'm going to dive right in. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to even do them one better. I'm going to, I'm going to wake I'm going to make sure I wake up during this devotional <laughs> retreat. It was a three week retreat. And, and I actually, I remember that I started having this thought like, yeah, I can do it. I can face my ego. I can go all the way. I'm going to face the ego all the way. <laughs> I'm going to look, I'm going to, I'm going to look the devil right in the eyes. I'm going to do it this during this devotional retreat. And then, and then about halfway through the retreat, uh, it happened to be on Easter, Easter Sunday. And I remember my ego was getting all excited, like, oh, that must be the day when it's actually going to happen. You know, of course, on Easter, that's how, how perfectly symbolic would that be if I, if I became, you know, if I woke, if I resurrected my mind on Easter. So I, I remember that morning, I, I started feeling, I was feeling a lot of fear too, because it was like, I think part of my ego was like all gung-ho, like I'm going to do this. And then the other part was, was shaking. Um, you know, something wasn't right. It, I, I didn't realize it then, but I was, I was basically taking charge of my own awakening. And, uh, and it was so funny because because the, the whole house, the, the other people at the devotional were all getting ready to leave and go to another house. And I was sitting there basically trying to meditate so hard and face everything that was in my mind, you know, like, like, kind of like, bring it on, bring it on, I'm going to do it. And they're all saying, Eric, we're leaving in like half an hour, you know, can you go pack your bag? And we're, we're, <laughs> can you help us clean the house? We're going to another house. And I, I just got angry and I, 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 I didn't even say anything to them, but I was just getting angry in my mind thinking they have no respect for what I'm trying to do here. They have no respect. I don't, they know I'm, I'm trying to really take the course all the way. <laughs> and then finally it was time to, for them to leave. And and they're saying, Eric, we're not really supposed to leave you here. You know, this is like, you're supposed to, this is a, you're part of a retreat. Please come with us. And I just refused. And then they all left, but then one of them came back a little while later and tried to talk to me. And I just had this massive reaction. It was like the ego was so, was so holding on to this idea that I could, you know, like, how dare they? this is supposed to be a retreat about enlightenment and I'm doing my hardest to become enlightened and they're not respecting it. And long story short, I ended up in a mental hospital that, that, that day <laughs> because I just had this intense, like it kind of, it was like such an intense um, conflict in my mind that I think I, my, my, my mind couldn't handle it. It, it kind of reminds me of, um, you know, David recently said that uh, there's that, that line in the Bible that says that you cannot uh, serve two masters and, and the mind is not built to ride two horses is another line from this movie that we watched once. And that was what was happening. I was basically like straddling two horses, like trying to wake up myself, but also trying to relate to my brothers and it just it just split but it turned out to be i would say the most beneficial experience of my life because uh you know going into that mental hospital and being there for a few days really really like forced me to go much much deeper and and it finally dawned on me that oh 
right. I was trying to wake myself and uh, yeah, no wonder I, I kind of got a little uh, out of hand and <laughs> ended up in here. So yeah, I, got, I can't remember why I started telling that story just now, but, but it's probably maybe some of you out there have tried to wake yourself and are still trying. And I'm just here to tell you, don't, you know, you don't have to uh, make <laughs> the same mistake that I made. It, it, it's not, and you don't, you can save time. You can just be relaxed. And I've even heard people say, yeah, but I, I don't, I'm not ready to like, I don't want to wait. Like, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to wake myself up like in this lifetime. And I, I just think, well, yeah, I mean, it's good to have the passion. Like it, that's really good to, to go for it, to really like to be committed to this practice. But ultimately we don't have, we're not in control of the timing. We're not in control of, you know, even the concept of this lifetime is, is something to question. It's not like, you know, it's, it's as if like we, we, we might do it this lifetime or maybe it'll happen next life, but I don't want to wait till next life. I don't want to have to go through this again. You know, yeah, to me, it's just, it's become very simple just right now. It's just, am I willing to, to listen to the Holy Spirit right now? That's the only, that's the only question there really is. Well, we've got about 20 minutes left, so I think I'll, um, yeah, I'll play just a, a few more songs. And the one that's coming to me right now is called Heaven is Perfect. That it was, um, yeah, another song I was given to just remember that it's all here. It's all, it's all here. There isn't really any future enlightenment. It's all right now. Heaven is perfect, heaven is perfect right now. Heaven is perfect, and heaven is here right now. Everything else that I seem to see doesn't really matter because it's got no reality. All I really want is to remember heaven within. Spirit is perfect, my spirit is perfect right now. Spirit is perfect, and spirit is what I am now. Everything else that I seem to be doesn't really matter because it's not my reality. All I really want is to remember the spirit I am. And I don't have to fall from grace ever again. I can just relax and listen to your voice, beloved friend. I hear you calling me back to the home I never left singing. Heaven is perfect, heaven is perfect right now. Heaven is perfect, and heaven is here right now. Everything else that I seem to see Doesn't really matter cause it's got no reality All I really want is to remember Heaven within Heaven is perfect Heaven is perfect right now Heaven is perfect Heaven is here right now. Spirit is perfect. My spirit is perfect. 
perfect right now Spirit is perfect And spirit is what I am now Heaven is perfect And heaven is here right now is no future. There's only the heart of God.
Thank you for speaking your love to me Thank you for telling me I've never done anything wrong It was only a dream Won't you come out to play? Dear Prudence, greet the brand new day.
<laughs> God, I love the Beatles. Uh, so good. So good. <sighs> well, we have just a few minutes left, so I'm going to play one last song for you that that is an original called If Not Now, Then When. No better time to start trusting and depending on God than right now. a thought I thought of what I used to believe I thought I was alone and separate till you told me it was just a dream and it takes no time if I want to see it if I want to stop feeling this pain I don't have to keep on falling over If I just let you in my heart again And if not now, then when? Thought I was a symbol of shame When I forgot your name I thought I was alone and different Until you told me that I'm still the same And it takes no time If I want to hear it If I want to stop I don't have to keep on falling over If I just let you in my heart again And if not now, then when? If not now, what then? I know the pain will never if I don't let you in my heart again So if not now, then when? If not now, what then? I know I'll finally be at peace When I just let you in my heart again So if not now, then when? And it takes no time if I want to see it. If I want to stop feeling this pain. No, I don't have to keep on falling over. If I just let you in my heart again. If not now, then when? If not now, when?
feels so good. Just to know that there's nothing else. <laughs> nothing else to think about. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining me this evening. That was so lovely. I'm so, yeah, I just, it was an honor to share with you and, and I could feel your presence and I'm uh, yeah, we're, we're in this all the way, all the way home. <laughs> so have a beautiful evening, and uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow and on Sunday as well. So love you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Eric. That was totally so beautiful. And um, yeah, we will be um, having our next session uh, tomorrow morning at uh, 9 a.m. MDT. Um, we can put a time converter in the chat if you want to check what time that is for you. And that's going to be our all day movie workshop. And so, uh, yeah, we look forward to joining you tomorrow. So have a wonderful evening. And uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye for now. Mm.